Hey everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today we're going to look at a 1973 Martin D35. Alright, we're back here. I uh, took the clamps off the pick guard. It turned out real nice, nice and flat and uh, really solidly adhered to the top. And now I'm going to clean up this area on the top where the bridge was, the bridge footprint. Uh, last thing I did was to take and as to screw the bridge down and score exactly around that outline so I have a nice hard clean cut there in the finish. And now I'm going to take some zip strip that I've put in this little cup here, paint it on there, and that little cut with the exacto knife will allow that zip strip to. I will lay it down as close as I can to that and allow that to seep over there. And, and that little cut will act like a, a bridge, a stop. It will come right in and rest in there and be right. That will allow me to scrape off all this uh, old glue and other stuff and really clean this area good for some, and uh, you know, prep it for gluing the bridge. So dip a little in there in my brush. Fairly thick so I can be pretty assured that it's going to go where I want it to. Obviously I have to do this with some care, but... When I first saw T.J. Thompson do this, I was a little concerned putting zip strip this close to all this other finish that I don't want to do anything to, but I found that, again, with a little bit of care, it's not nearly as hairy as it looks. Partly because of the thickness of this stripper itself, it's fairly thick, so it does not move very much. And if you have a brush with a nice squared and you can direct pretty much right where you want it. A little bit of care and practice. So by the time I get this painted on here, all the way to one end, starting at one end and going to the other, at the end that I started in, the stripper will have reacted with the old glue enough that I can start scraping it off and that stripper and old glue will actually start to dry a little bit so that again I'll be able to control it as I take it off and uh, I don't have to sit and wait for the stripper to react. I'm putting it on very quite thin as you can see. It's a move that I do numerous times when I'm working on the guitar, flipping it back and forth over my head to uh, just to get me to a slightly different position on the guitar. Okay, that was exciting, huh? literally like watching paint dry. Now I've got my three-quarter inch wide chisel um, and uh, has a nice square end on it. I'm going to use that to scrape off that uh, stripper which has started to react with the glue and really do its job. This also allows me to come straight up or right to that scribed line I can go with the grain, against the grain, across the grain, just because I'm really just trying to grab that top surface where all the glue is.
All right. That is the large majority of the stripper and the glue all removed and pretty clean there. Now I'm going to stare at it some more and make sure I've gotten the, uh, everything that I need to get off of there and allow that stripper to dry even more. So that's pretty clean. I'm gonna go back to my little uh, uh, sanding block here that will allow me to detail this and just sort of rough up the whole surface here. Smooth it out a little. I'm trying to take the bumps and humps out of it while making a uniform rough surface. So that surface is prepared now. Let's go back to the bridge, which we've did a pretty good job of cleaning up, although I can still see a few little tiny uh, bits of old glue on there. I can take those off pretty quickly, but the main thing I'm trying to do here is make sure that this fit is good. Another thing that that scraping of the outline did for me is you know, again, it formed a barrier for when I put this, the uh, zip strip on, but it's also made for a pretty nice, um, I can feel when the bridge sort of locks into that outline here just by setting it down on, you know, and, and it's pretty much right where it needs to be right there, and I can quickly and easily get that. And now I'm just, you know, lightly holding one finger in the middle here and just sort of tapping and ink. See here over here, I'm not rocking this part of the bridge. It's down there. There's a little rock right there. I should be able to see a visual from that too, that there is a gap here. And a slight rock. But it's pretty pretty close already. Not much. I'm gonna clean up that outer edge ever so slightly to make sure all that glue is gone. The cabinet scraper leaves a fairly smooth surface. And I do want that to have a similar, even, rough surface here. So I'm going to do some sanding with my sanding stick, just a block of wood with a, a sandpaper tack to it. And I'm trying, making sure that I'm working the middle of it here so I don't, because I do have that surface cupped as we mentioned before, and I don't want to screw that up and get my edge. I want to see a nice, good meeting of the edge to the edge. I think we're ready to go there. All right, so I've got my hide glue warming up in there. It is uh, almost ready to go. I've got my bridge being warmed up with the heat lamp over here. And I have a little array of tools from my bridge regluing kit here. Bolts and washers with wing nuts to go through the two E-strings and clamp the bridge down and position it and keep it where I want it to be. I have so I'm going to have those two screws and then make I have three clamps. One on each bridge ring and one in the middle. This one in the middle needs this little spacer to um, jump over the uh, X brace and with a little padded call that will fit right in the middle there. So there's my three clamps. And I need to install these little uh, guys. They span the X brace and allow me to put a clamp right in the middle of the brace without making any marks on the brace. You can see that one foot is taller than the other. That's because this one uh, is shorter 
because it's going to be sitting right on the bridge plate. This one's going to be sitting right on the top. I've just taken a little loop of scotch tape there, or, uh, masking tape, and I am going to fit it inside here right on top of the X brace. Basically, it's right here in that position. The X brace travels right there. Do the same with this one. Fortunately for me, Martin guitars are made very um, consistently as far as the bracing position within the top of a dreadnought guitar, so I know that when I put those there, they're in the right spot. Um, next thing I need, so then I have these three calls from TJ Thompson Guitars, ProLutheryTools.com. Three nice little calls. I've used these two already in uh, when I clamp the bridge over there to scrape the bottom. This one, the bridge is warming up nicely, is made specifically for a 1930s style uh, Martin bridge, but it also works fine on just about any, or it suffices, doesn't fit this bridge as well, but it does this for me. It's going to be the call that I use right in the middle here. These two edges right here put very nice pressure on the very outside edge of this bridge, as these do because they have that nice little scoop there, fit on there like so. And they put really uh, pressure exactly where I need it. This one has a little cutout uh, for that 1930s style bridge if, if the, for, and the glued in saddle. If you uh, did not have to take the saddle out, it would span that top of that saddle. But anyhow, those work very well. So let's see how the glue is doing. Almost ready. Pretty, pretty liquid. And uh, I'm going to take my heat lamp here. Excuse me for getting in the camera way. This is what I was heating the bridge up with because I want my parts to be reasonably warm so the glue will work. I'm going to heat the top of the guitar here a little bit too. I have to be very careful with this so I don't get too much heat. Um, but I need a little heat there too. Enough to warm it up, but not so much that it bothers to take my brush here, which is in the hot water, and I'm going to brush a layer of warm water on top of the stuff spruce. This um, is pretty necessary to uh, get the high glue to work. I remember the first high glue job that I did with a bridge. I did not do this. It softens the, uh, it just preps the wood. And uh, I'd have to really look into the science of this and what's going on there. But I know when I didn't do it the first time, the darn bridge fell right off. I took the clamps off and put my fingers on it and the glue did not hold, so I do that every time. I'm just gonna heat that up again. A little bit, all right. I'm gonna put this heat lamp, oops, and aim it such that I can sort of get some general heat over this area. Now I'm gonna apply my glue. You don't necessarily wanna do that right over top of the guitar because sometimes you can get some glue on the guitar. Uh, Fortunately, high glue is very forgiving in that situation and that I can clean that up very easily with warm water, which I will do so. Once I get this going, now that I've started this gluing process, I have a small window here to get that bridge on, positioned exactly where I want, and um, clamp everything up. That's why I've got all my clamps and calls ready to go. I don't have to be super fast in doing this, but you have a few, couple less minutes than you do when using aliphatic resin wood glue. This is that situation where that cut that I made, that is kind of locked. It's not super locked in there, but I can set that down there, and I'm very confident that it's where it needs to be. There's a feel there that allows me to just place that right where I want it. Moving around a little bit to make sure it stays where I want. And the other nice qualities of high glue is it 
is a high tack. So while I'm getting these clamps ready, that tack is, again, making it such that the, the um, bridge is not going to slide around on me. Clean up any of that glue squeeze out with my glue brush, which has been resting in warm water. It will allow me to go in here and get pretty uh, thorough with that. I don't need to. Again, I don't need to have a lot of concern here with the water. The first time I saw this. I wondered why are we introducing water to the edge of that glue joint when we're trying to glue it down and not we use water, warm water to loosen the glue joint, but because I've got that glue joint the fit good right around the edge. I don't have any concerns about this water really affecting the glue joint in a negative way. It allows me to do this cleanup. Once the glue dries and I take the clamps off, I can go back in and again go through this process to clean up all the, the glue squeeze out or any glue that's smeared around. Right. The bridge is high glued on. Now I can set it aside in my drying rack. I'm going to wait 12 hours or overnight is what I usually do. And, uh, and we'll take the clamps off and go back at it again. Thanks everybody for joining me in the shop. This is Joe Conkley at Elderly Instruments. Like us and share us on Facebook and we'll see you again soon. Thanks.